Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of the BMAX 124 BMW E30 M3 video build. So, final touches today. Like I said before, this is my favourite kit and one of my favourite cars. I built it so many times. I know all the little full boils and quirks and what have you. And uh, where it's going to cause many issues. And it's a nice simple kit. and just falls together so I know how it builds up and how quick it can build up as well. Got quite a bit to get through, um, but we'll skip through all the faff and what have you and just get down to the real nitty gritty. I will say I am full of cold in this video. I did this last night. I felt awful. I still feel awful, although I feel a little bit less awful today. Uh, so there's any sniffles, coughing. Uh, I know there's a dog roaming around, the seagulls, there's a van beeping in the background in the video because I was doing it fairly late last yesterday evening. Um, so do excuse any background noise or cops or if I sound like I'm dying. So let's jump in. Let's get going. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Okay, straight back onto this, and we're gonna start off by painting all our lights. So we've got orange front indicators. We're gonna use um, LP, let me see, it must be 52 clear orange for this i'm just going to brush it on not quite thick because it's lacquer we need to kind of pull it on not too thick and then uh, do the indicators on the rear lenses as well and then paint in the brake section as well so some nice careful painting here does the trick even though they are lacquer paints they do brush paint quite well like i say you need to load your brush up a little bit but some careful painting I'll get this done, no problem at all. There we go, and then onto the red. We've got to infill all this bar where the reverse and lights are. So there's a raised section for the reverse light. So you can literally load this up and then use the brush to carry the paint around and follow the raised edge of the reverse light section. So just take your time. When you get to the orange, make sure you don't go too crazy. You just put it up to it. There is, a, again, a slight demarcation line between that and the red. Like so. Like I say, just be nice and careful. Take your time. You, have to you could always mask this off and spray it as well. Uh, I just think it's rather time consuming doing that when this looks perfectly fine, looks more than acceptable. I can't notice any difference at all doing it this way compared to spraying it. So this is the way I tend to do it all the time. Two of those, they can be uh, popped on side to uh, dry, even for a couple of hours. Going to get all our window glass part off, clean them all up and get these masked ready for paint. Now in the kit you do get decals to do the window masks. I'll be honest, I've never used them. I've always had the mask set and I do have a mask set again. You can see it on the right hand side. Um, multiple companies make the mask set. So whichever one you've got should do the trick just fine. So clean up the sprue points with a 400 UMP thinny. Then hit it with the buffer side of the uh, polisher and then polish it up to a high shine. Take the Backing paper off the um, mask set. Line it up. And then again, it's one of those things. You'll either get it lined up perfectly first time. Or it's going to take you several goes to get it in place. I think I was quite lucky and got it on second or third time. Pretty much bang on. The more you do these, the more you get used to it. Just be gentle with the plastic. Clear parts can be a lot more brittle than normal styrene. Just take your time. Now... On the front and rear screen, we're going to mask the inside and spray the inside. On the side windows, we're going to spray the outside um, just to give the look of the rubber around the doors. And again, we've got a cotton bud and we'll just burnish all the edges down 
to make sure we get a good seal. And again, on the windows at the side, like I say, we're going to go on the outside of these. So make sure you've got it orientated the right way. I'm just going to quickly look at the instructions, making sure I've got the right mask. Always worthwhile taking your time here to double check these things. And uh, once you're happy, then you can commit to putting them down. Like I say, always check these things. If you're not sure, just take a minute. Just have a look. Double check. Make sure you got the right way. There we go. Get the back rear section on as well. Again, if you're not happy, just peel it back off and pop it back on again. Like so. Like I said, just be careful. These parts are quite brittle. They will break really easily. I've broke one or two before in the past, so take your time and make sure you get it all lined up properly. Once you're happy, burnish the edges down and then we can mount them up ready paint but the mask set does save a lot of time as you see we've got some cocktail sticks there to mount everything up and here we are in our spray booth so we've got some mist surfacer 1500 black and we're going to just paint all these like i said we're spraying the outside of the side windows so i'm going to put several light coats down just build it up slowly lacquer based it does dry really quick we're thinning this approximately 60 percent we must probably level and thinner and it makes a nice thin primer. I like this as a colour black one. I think it's a very nice, not quite matte, not quite semi gloss, it's right in between colour. And I do like it for window rubbers. Like I say, it's lacquer, it's a nice warm day, so it's drying nice and fast. So by the time you've gone around one bit, when you come back to the other, it's near enough dry again. And again, on the front and rear screen, we're spraying the inside to make sure you've got everything orientated the right way. Now, a little tip I give here, you see that I've mounted the screen to some white tack on a cocktail stick. Make sure you put the white tack on the mask, not the glass. I have found it will mark the glass uh, and you can't get it off. So make sure you put it onto the actual paper vinyl mask, whichever one you're using, rather than onto the actual glass itself. So a couple of coats on those, two or three coats, and that's always done. <coughs> we can then move on to the grill. And I was contemplating spraying this in LP5, but did it in Miss Surfs of Black. Thought the colour looked absolutely perfect, so I decided to leave it be. Like I said, I don't necessarily like to use this as a primer, but I do like it as the tone of black that it actually is. I do think it looks good. It's a nice shade of black. Um, and it covers quite well, being a lacquer paint. Build up's nice and slow. Get all those nooks and crannies. And you're all good to go. Also do the window wiper while we're at it as well. And should you think you need another few coats on your windows, you can go around and repeat that. While all these parts are drying, we've unmasked them. And while they're all sitting drying, uh, we're going to pop our wing mirror glass in. So this is a chrome part out of the kit. Obviously, we painted and cleared the wing mirrors. We've got some deluxe materials glue and glaze. We're going to put in just a little bit in there. Get our chrome part in place. Get a cotton bud, wipe it off like so. There we go, pop that to one side and then repeat that to the other side. And we're all good to go. Did contemplate some different mirrors on this, uh, but in the end, I decided to stick with these ones. I like these mirrors, they really suit the car. So we went with these ones instead. But yeah, the deluxe materials, glue and glaze, a lot more forgiving, being PVA based, a lot more forgiving than CA glue. Lot, 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 lot less likelihood of damage to the model. It's a time well spent. On to the obligatory polishing and sanding. So we did get a few dust spots, nothing really that major. So it didn't require a huge amount of sanding. Uh, but there's definitely some spots in the roof, the bonnet, and on the doors. So we've got some 8,000 micro mesh. I'm just going to go all round. Didn't see the need for any 6,000, so I went straight for eight. Uh, we're just going to give it a, a good go over. And get rid of as much of the dust as we're happy to do. Like I always say, I'd rather leave a little bit of dust there than risk burning through the clear coat and ruin all the hard work. So quite often a compromise between having a perfect paint job and 
not so quite perfect. And I'll admit, paint job on this one, it's got a few flaws in it, a few dust spots, but we got rid of them for the most part, and I'm happy with that. So we're going to go around the whole thing with 8,000, dry it off, have a look how it looks as we go, and then we'll go around it with the 12,000 until we come to our polish and compounds. So side to side patterns, front to back as well, you can alternate. And like I say, dry it off from time to time to see how you're going. You're seeing the high spots of dust and that will flat. Make sure you use it wet all the time. Not really applying any pressure. And as usual, be careful of all those edges, raised areas, anywhere where the paint will be thinner that we don't want to burn through and ruin all our hard work. Same with the spoiler, a little dust spot right on the back of that spoiler. So again, being careful of the edges, just give it a quick go over with the 8 and the 12. And there we go. And then we get some fresh microfiber cloths, or carbon fiber, as I've been calling them looking around lately. Don't think a few of you got that joke. I thought I was genuinely calling them carbon fiber. So a little bit of water in the compound just to moisten it a little bit. Tip away any excess. And then we'll go around and compound the whole car. So the compound is like a much more as abrasive polish. So this will get rid of all the fine scratches from the sanding process. And then we can come in with the polish later on and further still improve all those scratches and hopefully get to a nice shiny finish the 2k is fantastic the gravity stuff absolutely brilliant dust is our enemy sadly uh if it wasn't for the dust you could almost leave the 2k finish alone but it definitely does benefit from a sand and a polish to get the best out of it and again we'll be very careful of the edges any raised areas because any edges or raised areas the paint will be inherently thinner and it's very very easy to burn through which you will figure out as time and experience comes so just take your time and again side to side cross hash patterns don't go round and round you're gonna go round and round with the wax because with the abrasiveness you want to just go straight forward and back and again we just take our time sorry about the noise i've got my door open today it's rather warm I'm still full of cold, as you may be able to tell. And uh, yes, car outside reversing, beeping, or a van rather. And then we go, once we're done with the compound, we wipe all that off. Then we come with our polish. Same process, less abrasive than the compound. But this will get it to a nice high shine now. In this case, we're going all the way around until we've got everywhere. Then grab another clean microfiber cloth and we buff it all up to a nice high sheen. That van will eventually go outside that is reversing. No idea what it's doing. There we go. And yeah, happy with the paint job on this. Come out pretty well. Like I say, we've got a few spots of dust, but just one of those things. Um, dust. 2k they're always going to go hand in hand 2k is so sticky anything that lands for it just sticks to it absolutely ridiculously so it's a case of just do the best we can and there often is a limit where you want to not push it too far and wreck all your hard work and i admitted a long time ago there is a, a part a point where i will think right okay that will do that will do i'll accept a slight flaw to lessen the risk of ruining our model. Like I say, once this is all done, grab a clean cloth, we go around, we polish it all up to a high shine, get rid of all that sander, uh, sorry, polish residue. And we should get a nice high shine now. See, it's looking good. Beautiful color, lovely deep dark red. It's gonna look great in the pictures, this. Obviously all the lights I've got of my bench, white it out a little bit to make it a little bit lighter than it actually is. But yeah, happy with the paint job. It's come out pretty well. We've got some nice depth. We've got a nice um, colour there as well. Beautiful colour 
uh, TS-86. Glad I chose that colour. And yeah, pretty iconic for the red M3 E30, I think. I did like the silver that I chose, and we will use that on a different car. But I kind of am glad that I chose the red, because every time I envisaged me building this kit, it was with that colour. Head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and Lee's business because without alternate modeling products, there would not be any international scale modeler and all the videos we put out there and the Facebook page and the forum we run. We stock loads and loads of modeling products, including all our own products of our Apex Airbrush, our pigments, primers, sanders, thinner and cleaner tools, our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. Okay, so where the side windows go in, all the glass on this kit goes in from the outside. You can see some of the bodywork on the inside. So if you pop the window in, although it's painted black, you can see the red inside. So I've learned in the past to just brush the tops um, of the door cards and the edges of the B pillar as well. That way, when you look through the glass, it looks black and it doesn't look too um, weird being red. So I'm just going to use a micro brush, some model uh, color, sorry, model color black. To do this and just wipe it on let it dry uh, you could paint the whole b miller b pillar black if you wanted but i found i can foul the glue sometimes so i don't tend to do it real light clusters chrome these fit in absolutely brilliant they are handed so make sure you get the correct side just pop them in place they line up really well nice and positively get them lined up and then grab some ca glue Pop a little bit on each side, then we grab our activator and get these glued in place. Like I say, one of my favourite kits is, in fact, it probably is my favourite kit. Um, it just goes together so well, so easily, everything's so well thought out on it. Uh, it's just a great kit, it really is. Nice quick build, as you can see. We built this really fast. Um, I could easily build one of these in a week. Obviously, filming it adds a little bit of time. But such a great kit. And like I say, it's the ninth one I've built now. Technically 10th, to be honest. Um, but yeah, love this kit. And I've got many more in the stash. And I will build probably many more in the future. There we go. Just check them all lined up. Beautiful chrome parts from BMAX as well. Obviously, they're only light clusters. So they're not like exterior chrome parts bar the front kidney grill. And again, just a couple of dabs of CA glue either side. Load it up. <coughs> and then hit it with a kicker to get it well and truly secured in place. There we go. Simple, quick, and easy as that. Okay, onto our lights now. So these are dried where we painted them. We've got one of our edding paint markers here now. And we're going to put black edges around them to simulate the rubber seals that will be on the actual real lights themselves. So obviously we've got one edge we can't do here because it's attached to the sprue. So once these other three edges are dry, we'll cut it off and then we'll do that just before we put it onto the car. As you can see, it's just a case of grabbing a pen. So you could use a Sharpie. Uh, this is an actual paint marker. I find these cover a lot quicker and a lot easier. And like I say, what we're trying to imitate is the actual lens seal around the edge. And it just adds a little depth to light. It's well worth doing. It really does make a big difference. Like I say, once you've done this, put it to one side to dry for a bit. These paint marker pens do take a while to dry. So with all the lights done, you can see them on the bench drying. We can sort our front grill out. So we've got two chrome light reflectors to glue in place. So same process as before, a little bit of glue. Make sure you get the right light cluster. 
pop it in place. Make sure it's all lined up. Grab a micro brush and some kicker again. Just touch it, touch it, touch it, and it will instantly set the Sagler. No mess, no fuss, nice and easy. And there we go. We'll repeat that for the other side. And we are good to go. So we've got a kidney girls grill to go on this. So I'll cut the grill off the chrome sprue. Sadly, it's left two burr marks on the side. So I've hit that with our Molotow pen. I did that yesterday, so it'll dry overnight. And here we go. So we're just going to line it up, make sure we get it the right way. Make sure we've got the lights the right way and the grill the right way. There we go. And then we can add a dab of CA glue in the center to hold that on as well. So in these latter stages of a build, just really take your time. This is where it's so easy to get a splodge of glue or a fingerprint or just something stupid to ruin your model. Take your time. If you pick something up, make sure your fingers are dry. Make sure you've got no CA glue on your fingers from doing jobs like this. Just really take your time. So with those pretty much dry, it's been about an hour. We can cut them off, clean up the edges, use one of our thinny sponges from Ultima and a thinny buffer, like so. And then we can grab our pen and just finish off the rear lens, and we'll do that on all four of those lights. Front lights, now, where the actual lights sit, I've already filled in with a silver Edding paint marker pen. I did that off camera. And that was dried. And now we've got some glue and glaze uh, from Deluxe Materials. I'm just going to make sure our light is facing the correct way with the smooth part out. And then line it up. And push it in place. You will get some glue squeezed out the sides. But being... PVA based over 2K. It's really easy to clean up. A lot easier to clean up than um, Sago. And I definitely did not lick that cotton bud then. Or that one. At all. And how dare anyone suggest that I did. There we go. We repeat that to the other side. And they're in. And then the kidney grill. Every one of these I've ever built is just slotted in place. And holds itself in place. No glue. Nothing else needed at all. And there we go, that iconic front end of nearly any 80s, 90s BMW. Very pretty. Now, the actual headlight lenses, we're going to cut all four off, clean them up and pop them in place. So again, we've got our 220 thinny sponge, our thinny buffer, just clean up the edge. Give it a clean, give it a polish, and that's that done. Repeat that for all four, and then we start gluing in place. Again, the glue and glaze, just a little bit around the edge, right into the recess where it'll sit. Make sure you got orientated the right way. And then drop it in place. And again, push it home with the tweezers. You will get a bit of the glue squeeze out. We can get a cotton bud. I wipe off any excess. And there we go. There's all four in place. Now obviously, these are held in by PVA glue, so they're going to take a little while to dry. So bear that in mind. And definitely don't lick your cotton bud at all. Definitely didn't lick that. And just clean off any excess glue, like so. And there we go. Easy, simple, clean, and fuss free. All done. Rear lights. Now, again, every one of these I've ever built, the rear light lenses, they don't clip in place, but they hold themselves on more than securely enough by just pushing them home. So get the sides lined up, get the edge lined up, and just give a little push, and there we go, both of them in place. Give all the seams, sorry, all the panel lines a quick toothbrush over to get rid of any polish residue. And then we can pop our body in place. So line up the little lug at the back. There's like a locating slot at the back. And then two little clips at the front. Line it up. And then pull it back a little bit. 
to center the rear wheels and there we go that's all there in place now like i say all these windows going from the outside they're a bit of a pain especially the little eye one the side ones they are going to need a little bit of um, clamping to sort out so the cleanest way is to use the pva base glue again get them in place remove any excess of squeezes out and if you need to put a bit of a clamp on them you'll see me do it in a bit or a little bit of weight or whatever but the front and back screens have never been that bad it's just always the side one always just pops out that little bit so apply a generous amount not a ridiculous amount but just enough all the way around we grab our screen i've got a glasses cleaning cloth that i've been buffing these all up with by far the best trying to get a fingerprint on the inside because we won't be able to get it off now line it up push it home get a cotton bud don't lick it and then just remove any excess glue don't lick it again Get rid of any excess. That is there. And there we go. Just take your time. You may find it needs a bit of weight on it, so you could always put something padded on there. Just with a little bit of weight to hold it down. But I've found once the glue gets tacky and you push it in again, it'll hold it in anyway. Like I say, the side and the front screen's not really that much of a bother. Just make sure you get rid of any of that glue residue off the glass because once it dries it can be a bit of a pain to get off the clear plastic. As you can see, it just needs a little bit of purchase there. So best thing to do, let the glue tack up, push it home and it will hold itself in place. Exactly the same with the front screen, plenty of glue around there. Clean the glass, pop it in place, remove the excess. Don't look at your cotton bud. And there we go. So you can use CA glue. I've done it before. It can create a holy mess. And because you're putting the glass on now, if you do it this way, you can stand the chance of fogging the glass. And I know people are going to say you can get the Bill... Was it Bill Smith, is it? I can't remember who makes it now. Uh, Bob Smith, that's the one, not Bill. Bill's his uh, brother that makes the one that does fog glue. Um... <laughs> the Bob Smith stuff that anti doesn't anti fog, but it's terrible glue, in my opinion. It doesn't grab as well. So I like to do this, get it in place. Like I say, we put some clamps on the side, hold the side windows in, and we'll be all good. But yeah, I'm happy with the paintwork. Got some nice depth on that clear coat. Really is. Um, beautiful colour. And nice to get to these final stages of the build. Again, repeat for the other side. Get it all in place, remove the excess glue. Don't lick it. So I didn't lick it then. Being good. And there we go. Once we're happy, we've got some very soft jawed clamps. We're just going to pop on the top and apply a little bit of pressure. Like that, at the back. And at the front, then we just leave those be for a few hours. And that glue will, yeah, that will get a hold of that and keep the windows in place beautifully. So, like I say, there's numerous ways you could do this. You use UV glue from the inside. Your choice. I like to do it this way. It's the way I built every single one of these. I've not had a problem yet. Just clamp them, leave them for a bit. If you notice the front and rear screen are a bit dodgy, just put a little bit of weight on them until they're glued in place. Four dabs of PVA, uh, sorry, of glue and glaze. Where the rear spoiler goes, we just pop that in. Like so, and that's our rear spoiler in place. And then our wing mirrors on the side that we did earlier. Again, a couple of dabs of glue and glaze into the locator holes. Like so. Repeat that for the other side. Leave everything alone for a good couple of hours and the PVA base glue will dry. We've got a window wiper on as well now, as you can see. Again, PVA. And I learned a long time ago to just use PVA glue on the exterior because there's lost less, heart, lost less heartache. Now, number plates. I want to put in rear number plates on this. I bought this number plate set a while back off eBay um, for the Porsche 959. So I've got 16th and 24th scale 
license plates. So we've got a yellow one for the back. Uh, we're just going to make up a reg plate. So it would be very similar to the plate on my own car. So we're going to go with F77 PMB, which 77 is my year of birth, and PMB is my initials, Paul Michael Rutland. F is the registration year, which if I remember right, let me see. C is 86, D is 87, E is 88, F is 89. So it's a case of pick a number, prefix you want, get them all on, line them all up. And as you see, F77 PMB. It's a self-adhesive number plate, so we literally pop it in place, make sure it's straight. Use a cotton bud just to dab it down. And there we go, that is that done as well. Now, one final polish. We've got our Shine from the Ultimate Modeling Products a polish system. So we're going to spray this onto a cloth, wipe it all over the car, let it dry, and buff it off to a nice high Shine finish. So you could wax it if you want to wax it as well. Um, I like the detail spray. Just find it a bit quicker and easier to use. Uh, so it's just a case of going all around. Load up your uh, cloth. Don't spray it on the body because it'll go everywhere. Just go all around. It will bead up because of the water tension, surface tension. Once it's dry, you can come in, buff it off to a nice high sheen. But it's looking good. It's a very pretty car. Love the wheels. Love the colour of the wheels. And uh, yeah, happy how this is looking. So can't wait to get this in the photo booth, which I'm going to do first thing in the morning because it was currently 20 to 8 on a Tuesday evening. I am full of cold. My throat is killing me, and I thought, you know what, let's do the voiceover. So I've had to stop several times to cough. Um, <laughs> so I want to get this out of the way, and then this will be released on Wednesday. And then we can move on to our next project, which is quite exciting. I know what it is, because it's just been released, and it's on its way to me tomorrow. So stand by for a review of a very eagerly anticipated kit by myself. And uh, what would be our next video build the seagulls are happy as well as you can hear the joys of having my door open in my back garden everything we're getting bleeping trucks seagulls my jack russell's roaming around everywhere it's just wonderful it really is but anyway all around the body with our nice detail up spray let it all dry and we come with another fresh cloth and buff it up um, yeah this thing's looking absolutely spanking loving this one of my favourite cars. I love the E30 BMW. It's a beautiful looking car. And this is a great kit to build. There we go. One final polish up. We got all the glass. All the bodywork. Just need to be careful you don't snag anything with the carbon fibre cloth. Like I say, we get some nice pictures tomorrow. Then we can move on to our next project. But yeah, anyone that's built one of these kits, I highly recommend it. It's a great kit to build. Goes together really well. And what a truly iconic motorsport legend of a car this is. Lovely build. Nice, simple, quick build. And just a great looking car. Look at that. Very happy with that ride height. It could have sat a little bit lower. But I quite like it there like that. i got that iconic front end. Our red bucket seat with harnesses. With our window wiper back. Beautiful red paint. Our custom-made exhaust on the back, custom-made number plate. And yeah, those wheels just look absolutely beautiful. Very happy with this. So there we go. So we'll come back in a second, have a look at some pictures, and have a little chat, and see what we thought about the build and the kit. There we go then, that's it. Um, another one off the bench. I think that's video build number 10 of the year. Um, build number 10 as well so not bad considering we're just over halfway through the year ish uh consider they're all been video build as well because it does take a lot longer um it probably adds a good hmm, maybe another week on the builds by the time i get everything done and edited and uploaded uh it does add another good bit of time to the builds so yeah happy with how that's gone i've got some pics of it as well so let's have a quick look at those and a little bit of a chat and a recap of what we did. So this is the BMAX 24 scale BMW E30 
M3, wonderful car, wonderful kit. And I've wanted to do this as a kind of fast road track car, similar thing I did with my Escort Cosworths um, a while back. And I kind of always envisioned it in red, but I kind of wanted to do the silver color that we used on the wheels. But I'm glad I've done it red because it does look very, very striking in that color. So it was primed in Tamiya Pink Primer that was decanted out the rattle can, thinned about 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder, and sprayed through the uh, Apex at about 18 psi. Several coats of that on there to get a nice deep pink primer. Um, it was then base painted in Tamiya TS86, again decanted, thinned with Lacquer Thinner with Retarder through the Apex, several light coats of that to give us that wonderful deep red colour. Uh, we had to pill for some decals out of some other decal sets to get the M3 logo. Um, and we used the BMW logos out the kit box decals, so no issues there. We gave her a black Tam Tammy, sorry, a black Tamiya panel line wash on there to accentuate all the panels. And then we clear coated it in Gravity Colors Spain. Uh, 2K clear coat, wonderful, wonderful clear coat. This went down beautiful, really rich and that already beautiful deep red um really came out nice that day we've got a bit of dust in there which we took care of um at a later stage after it properly cured with some micro mesh and the ultimate polish system as well so that came out beautiful in the end not perfect as i always say there's a line i draw and a limit where i think right okay it's not worth wrecking it we'll leave that slight floor in none of my models are perfect i'm the first one to admit that um but i think it looks okay. We put some scale production 18 inch Alpina wheels on there, which are some of my favorite, favorite wheels. We use on the, we use those on the six series we did, and we got an eight series in the stash that we will probably add those to as well. They were primed in Mr. Surface of Black and painted in Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Stainless Steel 2, which is a wonderful, wonderful color and look absolutely fantastic. Um, and that's it really, uh, various uh, LPs used on the exhausts and the, the running gears etc. Um, we scratch built the twin tailpipes on the back of the exhaust as well because I wanted to lose the DTM uh, uplift exhaust, just wanted two straight cut out exhausts and we modified the suspension to get the ride height to sit just where I wanted it. We could have lowered it a bit more, especially on the back, but to be honest looking at kind of m3s i quite like the the, the um, stance i got on this the front's perfect the back looks about right to me and i'm really happy how that turned out interior we flocked in embossing powder in black we painted the roll cage ts86 like the car and the seats were micro bloomed to add a bit of texture uh, they were seated out of a subaru kit and then we painted them in textured red paint and added some black um, seat belts from Studio 27 in there as well. Nice simple kit. Turned out pretty well. I'm very happy with this. Um, out the box bar the wheels really. And uh, yeah, can't fault how this turned out. One of my favourite kits of one of my favourite cars. A truly iconic BMW. Uh, this is a build I've wanted to do for a long time. And I finally have it. And it's in my display case. Pride of place as one of my favourite builds. There we go. If you're watching and you got this far, let me know what your favourite build to date has been or where your passion lies. It doesn't have to be cars. It can be anything at all. What kit have you built multiple times? What's your favourite subject? What's your favourite kit? Let me know in the comments down below. It's always interesting to hear other people's opinions and views. Uh, and it's nice if you've got that kind of subject that sparks that kind of interest that these cars do for me because it gives you passion and it gives you drive in the model building itself. There we go. Right then, what's next? Well, my throat is killing me, so bear with me because I might cough my lungs up in a minute. We've got several things on the go. The Warhammer 40k night was started. I'm having a bit of trouble carrying on building it. It's immensely boring. Um, a lot of seams to work on, on it, but we'll get there. It's just going to take a bit of time. So bear with me on that one. We will see that night. Once I get it all built up, I think we'll be fine. The F51... I've still got interest in it, but the cars are what I always will grab my interest. And we've got one on the way that's especially grabbed my interest because it's, again, one of my favourite cars uh, and a kit that's literally 
just been released and will be with me within the next hour. So I am eagerly waiting for this. And we will get a review up of that today. And that is the new, new 24 scale Audi Quattro rally car. Short wheelbase Audi. Uh, this is the wide bodied S2 uh, a few years back, which I built. They've now done the non wide body standard car, um, which is my favourite one. So that's been released and it is winging its way to me. As we speak, it will be here within the next hour. So I'm going to review that and that will be my next video build on the channel. So if you're a patron, and it, well, if you want to support the channel, you can become a patron and do a monthly donation. The links are in the description down below. Um, and you can do a PayPal me link as well. If you want to do a single donation as well. If you're a patron tonight, there is a live stream just for the patrons. Um, and we're just going to discuss future builds. Basically, tonight's more of a test than anything to see how it goes streaming. I'm not sure which... Um, which way to stream it was use YouTube or you zoom like normal I'm not sure how to do it just yet but tonight it's more of a test to see how I go and get on so if you're a patron thank you very much your support is greatly appreciated uh, and if you're not maybe consider it because without the patrons and the donations and that I couldn't carry on doing this there'd be no videos for me unfortunately so it's definitely helping with keeping the content going and um, thank you for everyone who sent a patron donation, a PayPal donation, gifts in the post, you're all crazy, the lot of you. Thank you very, very much. Um, and that's it. So keeping out later today, there should be a review of that new, new kit out on the channel. Like I say, I am live tonight for the patrons. I'm going to do a bench update tomorrow where we can chat about this and the Ferrari we finished and I'll discuss anything that was discussed in the patron live feed last night. Um... And yeah, we'll see where we're going to move on to with some buddy builds, future projects, and any plans that I've got for videos, which I've got loads of plans for. Uh, and feeling ill is not the best when you've got loads of things you want to do, but you just feel like you just want to curl up in a ball and go to sleep for six months like I did yesterday. So there we go then. There we go then. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching today. As always, check out and the Sky Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We can get a lot of products I use in my videos and there's a big long list of everything I use that needs updating in the description of the video. If you click on that, I'll take you to the forum. It's a huge list of videos and items and all sorts of stuff. Check out my Paul ISM Facebook page where all my personal model work is shared and check out the live bench page and the offer hangout group where all the links and news for the live shows are as well. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. I have. Uh, like I say, don't forget to answer that question I asked you just before as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you all this afternoon for that review and the patrons tonight for a live stream and then tomorrow for a bench update as well. So take care. Bye-bye.